During my final year of an engineering degree at UNSW, I became involved with an ambitious student project started by fellow graduate Chris McGrath three years ago. The aim of this project was to bring renewable energy to a remote village on one of Vanuatu's 83 islands. Emaki, on the southeastern coast of Tanner Island, sits in the shadow of an active volcano. A three-hour drive over rough terrain from the nearest town, it's completely isolated from modern civilization. The village is a regional centre for a local population of 3,000 people who travel there to access the essential services of health and education. Because of its remote location, diesel has to be delivered by boat and can cost up to $4 a litre, making a generator too expensive to run for more than a couple of hours a day. Before we arrived, the lack of a constant supply of electricity affected life in Amaki in different ways. For instance, the primary and secondary school students could only study during daylight hours and often finish their education without having ever used a computer. As for the health clinic, it was staffed by a lone doctor and didn't have a vaccine fridge, meaning immunizations were a day-long trip away or simply didn't happen. Women in the village regularly gave birth by torchlight and there was a high rate of infant mortality. The first challenge was to figure out how to generate enough electricity to power the community buildings. Hydropower is one of the cheapest forms of renewable energy and a stream running down the mountain past a market would be ideal for the task. The system begins with 800 metres of water pipe alongside the stream. We have never seen something like a uh, pipe like uh, this one, the first time. This pipe would generate enough pressure to spin a micro hydro turbine, harvesting the energy in the falling water and turning it into electricity. Underground cables would then carry the energy to an old shed in the centre of the village, which we converted into the system's control room. Here, batteries would store the energy and smart inverters would regulate the electricity supply. A mini grid would then distribute the power to the village's various buildings. The cables needed to be buried half a metre deep and with no machinery to help, there was plenty of work for everyone. The locals speak a combination of French, Pidgin English and a unique dialect, so we had to use a lot of sign language to explain our plan. It was a crucial part of the project to teach the villagers how to maintain the system once it was up and running. We held workshops throughout the build and a local committee was set up to take ownership and oversee a maintenance program. The turbine is now generating 20 kilowatt hours a day, similar to the amount used in a small home in Sydney. Most importantly for Amaki, they're saving $4,000 a year on diesel costs and those funds are now freed up to spend on improving the schools and health clinic. Thanks to the reliable electricity supply, a vaccine refrigerator, lights, computers, printers and mobile phone chargers can now be used around the clock. Helping provide renewable energy to Amaki is the most awesome thing I've ever done. I'm hooked on the place and the people, and Chris and I are already planning another trip back. <laughs>